Amen. Turn with me in Romans, the, the 15th uh, chapter. Now the name of this is, Why Must We Fail? Has anybody in this room ever failed? Amen. Well, I'm among friends in failure then, aren't I? But it seems like, and some of you here tonight are feeling as though you're failing even now. All of us have gone through times when we thought that the Lord God, even though that he said he'd never leave us, would never forsake us, there's times we felt like that maybe, maybe he went somewhere down in the Caribbean on a vacation, right? Because he seemed to be nowhere around. But we're going to get into this and we're going to show you tonight that your failure is a process of God. That you failing is going to bring you to a place with God if in fact you're being led properly, and you are, that you never dreamed about. All right? The, the, the bigger the failure, huh? Could very well be the more God's going to use you. And some of you ought to just be jumping up and down at that statement. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Now, Romans 15.4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now, you know, I never thought a lot about that for the first few years that I was uh, studying the scriptures, but the, the words uh, uh, written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures. Well, you might as well be going ooch ouch, ooch ouch, ooch ouch. Because evidently this thing isn't designed by God for us to get in. Now, now, folks, I'm going to tell you a lot of Christianity believes that once you are saved, once you're saved, you no longer can sin. And that's dangerous, okay? Because Paul said, I sin daily. And the church is definitely a follower of Paul and should be. But the fact of it is that we have to begin to realize that there is, there is a possibility that we might fail, but we, we, we understand something. It's written for our learning. Say learning. Learning. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, that's a wonderful word. And knowledge is a wonderful thing. You know, we went through some things about knowledge without wisdom. Then we found out we needed wisdom with knowledge. And all these things collectively, bless God, bring us to the place where we can use the knowledge that God gives to us? Well, let me tell you something. With this right here, you find out that the scriptures might have hope. The scripture is the only hope that we have. The, the, the key that I believe and have always believed is bless God that when you have sat in a denominational church or even otherwise, they have a doctrine Okay, and that doctrine they have decided that you must have, and what they do is they teach the doctrine, and maybe it takes a year, maybe it takes two years to go through the, then they start over, and they just take you back through the doctrine, they take you over and 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 over a uh, spirit of religion. Well, you think that you're right and everybody's wrong. See, that's what's wrong today. That's the reason that hearts that are that of Ephraim are, are, are still holding back, okay, because of the fact of their religion. Because of their religion. And all of you have heard the stories. Well, Paul said, you know, Paul said, even though Paul kept the law, Paul said we weren't to keep the law. And like I told you when I taught that, now there's something wrong somewhere. And there's not anything wrong anywhere. The law was to have been kept. And I hope you've studied that well enough by now to understand that. Somebody just say amen, I'd appreciate it. Amen. The past is to teach us how we must live in the future. That's what the past is all about. You know, uh, one time... Somebody had a joke to tell when I was somewhere in high school. And the, and the joke amounted to these two little boys sitting at the table, and they were having Cheerios for breakfast, all right? 
And the father came in and just waylaid uh, one of the boys. All right. And the other one had not poured his bowl of uh, Cheerios yet. And he said to him, he said, now what have you got to say? And he said, I'll tell you one thing. I don't want any of those Cheerios. Now that's kind of the way all this is with God. We look around and we see these people. How many people have we judged because they are failing and using, hmm? Well, you know, if they were right with God, they wouldn't be going through that. Oh, that's going to get quiet. If you've been in a Pentecostal movement, you've done that a time or two too many. Okay? Well, you know, if they were really, they're sinning a camp somewhere. We've heard that over and over again, haven't we? And yet at the same time, as I've tried to diligently teach you with patience, to this point anyway, the scriptures are so clear. We can't afford to judge each other. Amen? We can't afford to judge each other. The consequences far outweighs <laughs> the judgment. So now, so now we've placed ourselves in a position of coming out of religion. That's what this is. It is a coming out party, if you will, okay? It is a going forth party, if you will. When the Lord God sent the angel and the angel instructed me that I was to be like unto that of Moses and to bring Ephraim, the 10 lost tribes of all of Israel, out of the four corners of this earth, teach you, prepare you to come back home to the land of Israel itself. I thought to myself then, I thought, wow, if we were to ask everyone in this room tonight to stand up and tell us from what church you have come, we would have, my goodness, who knows how many different denominations, how many this, that's, and everything else. Now, folks, when you bring all of that, if you don't come with a willing and an obedient heart, you can become poison to somebody else. And we've had it happen. And we'll have it happen again. Well, you know, I know Prophet Deckard's right about this, but I really, you know, I, I don't know, don't know about that over there. You know, religion is a killer. For the most part, sitting in this room tonight, not all, but for the most part, you people have give up and give in. You've decided that, bless God, that you are going to go all the way in this thing, and you're going to get there, and you are going to get there. But when, when the Lord God uh, dropped that in my bucket, as I'm always saying, I wasn't real, real sure how long that was going to take. I thought, well, maybe, you know, I, I know when Elijah comes, which he's here, he's going to restore all things. I'm going, well, he must be going to restore us then to the place where we're going to all of us live to be Methuselah's age because this thing, Lord, is going to take a while. Some of us are a little more boneheaded than others. Amen. Thank you. Well, th thank you, brother. Quick to the response. I like that. God loves us. He's going to bring us this. But you have to understand. You have to realize. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10, the first, the first verse. So the past is to teach us how we must live in the future. We learn. You know, I have always told people, what you're seeing here with this prophet is not somebody that's perfect by any means. You're seeing somebody that made a lot of mistakes Learn to repent quickly and not go back and make the same mistakes again. And that's what stands before you tonight. I wish I could stand up here and, well, no, no, I'm sorry, I can't. Because I have failed and I have failed much in my life, in this ministry. There was times that I felt like that, bless God, that, that, that God wasn't going to use me anymore until the angel came and taught me what I'm going to teach you tonight. 1 Corinthians 10, 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed 
through the sea. In other words, he's saying, I don't want you without this information. And we're all baptized unto Moses into the cloud and into the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also, uh, also lusted. So the scriptures are written to be an example to you and I. So we can follow after them. See, after all of these years, now, you know, when I was 30 years old, this, would have, this was a whole different thing. I, I, number one, I couldn't teach at these depths because I didn't have these depths. But the thing, the thing is, as you grow into the things of God, you begin to realize that, bless God, that there's more tomorrow than there is today. No matter where you are tonight with God, there's more tomorrow. But you see, that doesn't come by UPS. Okay? In other words, that's not just something, it's just something that is automatic. What it is is something that amounts to seeking him as fine silver and fine gold. And there's some people that bless God that really believe that they can just hang on to the, hang on to the tassels of the prophet and you're just going to come in. That'll work for a while. Okay? Some of you I've had to drag into this thing for quite a while, but that day will end because God wants you to stand what? On your own. Seven, neither be ye idolaters as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and 20,000. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of the serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. And all these things happened unto them for examples, or examples. And they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. So all the things they went through, and, and, and what I wanted to say and I didn't say, was the fact that you would think that somewhere, sometime, that there would be ministry that would say, you know what, boys and girls, if we just do what they did in the book, if we'll just adhere unto what they adhered to, then this thing will work for us. But somehow we didn't do that. Somehow what we did was we began to what? We began to vote. Well, I think talking in other tongues is, you know, well, you know that's what they do down, yeah, you know, that's poor people. You know, that's the thing I heard all the time. It's the poor people. Ah, baloney. You know what I'm saying? Well, 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. You need to underline that scripture. Okay? See, there's two problems here. We got those of you that are so cocksure that, you know, and then we got those of you that are a whole lot less than being cocksure. And what we got to do is bring this side up and take this side down. We're going to have to let a little bit out of the balloon on this side and air the balloon up over here a little bit. Because what we want you to understand, when you start thinking that you're so close to God that you can't fail, you already failed. Okay, if you're taking notes, be sure to put that down. When you think, listen, let me tell you something. God said we're to do what? We're to serve him with fear and trembling. We are to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. And he meant that. He means that today. And yet at the same time, few people even consider those scriptures. Well, I'm not sure why, but uh, then again, it's everybody for themselves. 13, there hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. There is none. You need to underline these two. But God is faithful. Say, God is faithful. God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So there is no such thing as going through a fiery trial and not making it. There's no such thing unless you decide you're not, you don't want to make it. I think one of, the, one of the hardest things that we have to deal with, Don and I, and the 10, 
is people that want somebody to feel sorry for them. Say sorry. Sorry. Now, it does sound sorry, doesn't it? Even hearing it from up here. Feeling sorry for them. And we'll get phone calls and all oh, the sisters get on there and they'll just bawl. <laughs> they'll just squall. <laughs> I hope that sounds pitiful at least. That's the reason I don't get on the phone, okay? You wouldn't like it real well if I was on the phone. Because you see, there's no reason for that because there's no scripture to back that up. This thing is yea and yea, saith the Lord unto us. Say yea and yea. Yea and yea. That's what this is all about. But in order to receive this, you have to understand what it's about. Number one, you have to receive the fact that you are a child of the living God. You have to receive the fact that the Father wants us to have everything that he has promised us. And some of us are willing to settle for far too less. He wants you to have it, okay? Let's go to Deuteronomy 6.23. Deuteronomy 6.23. Hmm. Well, Donna, I guess, uh, I guess we'll have to do our song afterwards. <laughs> I told Donna, we have a, we have a, a, a Sukkot um, song, we, we, and we, we'll sing, the girls will sing it for you. And I told Donnie, yeah, I'll come up. We're going to do that, you know, before I start ministering. Yeah, they know anyone wouldn't let that happen, so we'll try later. 6.23, Deuteronomy, and he brought us out from thence that we might bring us, that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. Now, I'm going to tell you something. God didn't save Israel just to be saving them. Okay? And a lot of people, you know, a lot of people look at it like that. But no, he, he didn't save Israel just to save Israel. Bless God, I'm going to tell you something. With Moses, what did they do? They saw the ocean part. Yes, they did. And, 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 the, and the, the, the way to escape, and they crossed us on dry land. They got across, and the, the ocean came back in, the Sea of Reeds, and, and destroyed the Egyptian army. They saw that. Now, what a bunch of, huh? What, what is it now that... Uh, uh, let's see, what that guy's name? Um, his mama said, stupid is as stupid does. Thank you. Oh, Forrest. Stupid is as stupid does. Should that not have been enough? My Lord and my God, how many of you lately have seen anything like that happen? Now, if you've been around me traveling the world, you've seen some things similar to this thing happen. But it, no, no, you, but you see... That didn't change Israel. Now you would think the bunch of dummies would look at it and every time something, they, they want to get out here and stone Moses, they'd think, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, God used him to, 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 you know, to, to bring us through. No, 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 they, they'd throw old Moses under the bus at any chance they got, as we'd say today. Amen? I'm always saying one day I'm a prophet, the next day I'm a false prophet. Can't be both, Okay. Have people come, oh, the prophet, the prophet, and then the next time you're, well, I, well I, I discovered or God spoke to me, he's a false prophet. Well, it can't be both. But you see, that's how indecisive we are, brothers and sisters. We have been so pampered so long with us deciding what it is in the church that we'll receive and accept and what it is that we won't. We're a bunch of spoiled brats. We're spoiled. You ever, you ever been around kids that are just spoiled rotten? That's what the church is, spoiled rotten. They bawl, they squall, they <clears throat> woo-doo their diapers. Somebody's got to put a bottle in their mouths. Some of these people are 70 years old that this has to be done to. Some of them are 30, some of them are 20. All ages. Now with Joshua, the priests put the ark upon their shoulders and began walking with the whole congregation of Israel behind them. Hmm? Now I'm going to tell you something. That river didn't open up until the soles of their feet touched the water. And then it opened. Now, what if we were to do that exercise here this evening? with the nearest river. 
I'm not sure we could get even get enough people to go. Oh, there'd be some go just to see if it was going to happen or not. Okay. But, but you see, especially if you were going to be one of the priests that was going to be out there walking down through their side to side and your soul had to touch that. And then that river parted. See folks, th th this isn't, this isn't an act in futility. This is an act presented by the Lord God himself to bring us to a place that he truly can depend on us, number one, can use us, number two. Say, God, God wants, to use me. wants to use me. Desperately, like as I told you, we're all God's God, folks. This is it. There's not going to be another great movement of God on the face of this earth ever. This is the last roundup. And again, that's the reason why we've got to get you on the same page with this prophet where you're not only talking the right talk, you're walking the right walk. Okay? We have to do that. Some of you in this room are going to have to deny yourselves of some things. Okay? Some of you people in this room need to be delivered from selfishness because you're selfish. You think of yourself first before you think of your brother and sister. That's called selfishness. Now, how far will that get you to Israel? Oh, about six or seven foot off the dock, wherever we'll be leaving, okay? That's about how far that'll get you. Because my commission from God is to bring you back whole. Spirit, soul, and body. That is my commission and until I am able to carry that command out by God, we couldn't go anywhere. And, and you know what? Now, we've been together, what, over six years now. This movement has actually officially been going on. And from, the, uh, from year one, people were all, well, you know, I, know I, I, I mean, what do I do? Go home, I'll sell everything I got and, 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 and go on and we all move together. How, how's this going to work? I said, no, you just go home, sit down, shut up and learn something. I hope you're all getting that by now. I got a cup at home. Uh, my uh, sisters sent me from, um, from down in Texas that's got all my little sayings on it. You know, and that is, shut up, sit down, learn something. And, um, of course, I don't have to read those uh, in the morning drinking coffee to remind myself, but there, it's nice. But you see, God has to have us far beyond where we are now. See, some of you people that's over here in this category that's got your balloon blowing up a little bigger than it needs to be thinks you're ready. And I'm going to guarantee you, you're not ready. If you were ready, this prophet would be drawing you to the side, talking to you about how ready you are. And when the time comes, that's what will happen. Until then, what's, what is it? Shut up, sit down, and learn something. It's a broken and contrite spirit that God's after. Most of you in this room have that. There are some of you in this room, I'm not sure whether you ever will have it. And that's scary, folks. That's scary. Because you believe that you've got this all figured out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I follow the prophet that follows the Lord God. But at the same time, there's a hauntiness about you. But you know, God has a way of letting the air out of that balloon and putting air over into this one, okay? I, I'm probably more anxious to get this one blowing up over here than letting the air out over here because letting the air out over here is going to get a lot of, well, he don't love me. Well, I mean, I'm just not, you know, I'm just not important enough for him to, you know. Selfishness? Mm-hmm. Hauntiness? Mm-hmm. God knows exactly what it's going to take to bring you in. And I want you to make sure you understand that tonight, if nothing else. God knows exactly what it's going to take to bring you in. As I've said so many times in so many of the quarterlies, you don't want to get this thing down to where this prophet's got to walk these aisles and start standing you up and telling you exactly what's going on that doesn't need to be going on. 
that will get so embarrassing that none of us will enjoy it, okay? Now, during that time with those priests, some 3,500 years ago, that's what miracle working faith was all about. Today, miracle working faith in the church is long since taken a hiatus. It's the thing that I cried and screamed from one end of this country to the other end. Where's the power? Where's the power of God? Nobody. Oh, we had people could walk around and give you a word. So can a local soothsayer. Come on. I'm going to tell you as a prophet, most of the people, okay, in the 90% out here in the Pentecostal and charismatic world, giving people a word of knowledge was straight from a familiar spirit. God didn't have a thing in the world to do with it. A soothsayer can tell you your future. If you know that, shake, shake your heads. God tells us we're not, you know, that's an abomination. Stay away from that because he doesn't want us involved in that. But yet at the fact of it is, somehow the church believes that soothsayers could never get into the church. Oh, Brother Deckard, we have the blood of Jesus over our door. And I said last night, and some of you and all of you probably have heard that wives tale that oh the blood the blood what the blood will do the devil can't cross over the blood no what the blood did was give us eternal life okay which is everything in the end there isn't anything greater than that in the end as I keep saying the problem is we're here now let's go to Galatians 419 that's what has to be considered we're on this earth now I'm not ready to go home yet Neither are you. Galatians 4, 19. And I love the way he put this. He says, my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Now, let's get something straight here, okay? I hope you're all looking up here at this prophet. I ain't going to do a lot of travailing over this whole thing, okay? I'm going to feed you. I told you I, I'm not taking in anybody. I'm not taking anybody to raise. I'm not changing any poodoo diapers. I'm not putting pacifiers in anybody's mouths and bottles. Not going to do that. If you need that, go back to the church that you came from. This is far beyond that. I can teach you, bless God, how to move into the power side of the things of God. But I'm not going to take you up every time you call and oh things aren't going well prophet things aren't going well well after tonight I hope you can understand why okay now now I'm going to tell you something Yeshua and this is what it's all about Yeshua being formed in us that's what it's all about God wants us to come uh, into a, a fullness of Yeshua that, that bless God the church is for since not knowing, uh, living where we possess everything and enjoy everything that God has given to us. See, the, the key, uh, again, as I've said for a long time since you've known me, is that if we can bring ourselves into this, you've got to fathom somehow in your minds, people would want this. If you had a next door neighbor that blessed God, that possessed everything that God's got, hmm, wouldn't you be just a little bit interested in knowing why? Sure you would. Wouldn't you probably have a conversation? Of course you would. And then when they told you it was because they were a child of God, they kept his holy covenant and the testimony of his holy son, Yeshua, and you're saying, and, and that's the reason you've got all that? Yep, that's the reason. People will come running, brothers and sisters. But it's like I told the church all over North America. You know, people start inviting people to these churches. You can be sick at home. They're all sick, the churches. Pentecostals are the sickest bunch of people that I've ever been around. They're broke. They're depressed. Their kids are a mess. 
They can stay in the world and be that way, folks. Why should they come to church with you? <laughs> well, you figure that one out, because I don't know. Now, understand something here. Israel refused to believe or trust God. And that's what got them in, in the whole mess that they got into when they got out and uh, came across uh, the Sea of Reeds. All right. Now, they were not living in the fullness of God's blessings and they knew it. And there they were. Can you imagine traveling around 40 years in a place that I think I used to know exactly? And I'm, uh, d d don't email me the right numbers because I really don't care. Uh, but something like a week they could have walked completely across that. And yet with God's guidance, see how tricky God is when he wants to be? He took them 40 years on a round trip ticket. Huh? As I always said, they got to the place where they had the rocks named. There's big old boulder. Well, there, there's, there's old Joe, Joe the boulder. Look at there. Didn't we see him last year? Well, let's all touch old Joe the boulder when we go by. Well, you would think somebody got smart enough to profit just going on out there. No, no, I'm sorry. It didn't matter how smart they'd have gotten. They were blinded to the fact that God said they were going to spend 40 years out there. And they spent 40 years. 40 years. Can you, what could I do in 40 years? Well, let's see. I think I, I think I remember the fact that after I got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, I used to go out in the backyard and practice preaching. I said, God, send me. Send me, God, wherever you want to. I've got a message. Do you know what kind of messages it takes to do three meetings a day for two weeks? It takes more than one, folks. I had one, and it may have made 15 minutes. 20 if I stretched it out a bit and I'm ready to go. I'm ready. God, wherever, wherever you want me to go, Lord, just, just, just send me. Send me, Lord, your anointed vessel. Sound like I may have been over here with the balloon a little bit too. Hmm? And then uh, somewhere of about 15 years later, the Lord took me up on that. And the Lord said, I want you to go to the Philippines and set the people free. Well, Lord, I, I'm not into the Philippines. I was thinking more like Florida or something like that. <laughs> huh? No, he says, uh, I, I want you. He said, I'll, I will have somebody contact you in the next few weeks. And he said, uh, I want you to, now folks, I'd only been on one or two airplanes in my whole life, okay? And I'm about to go way over yonder. I'll never forget. I got nervous about a week before it was time to, to leave. And I begged the Lord God, Lord God, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Sound familiar, didn't you? I thought maybe he'd have sympathy for that prayer. <laughs> he didn't before, but you don't know. The day came. I'm nervous. Did I have enough? Uh, enough? Uh, oh, I had plenty of ministry by that time. Get up out of bed and start down my country road to the main road, the hard road, I mean. Folks, I was bawling like a baby. I don't want to go, God. Then all of a sudden, I heard me standing and saying, Boy, I'd like to poke that guy in the nose. <laughs> Send me, Lord, I'll go anywhere. But I wasn't ready to go anywhere, was I? It took that many years to be ready. Your zeal can get you outside in front of God, guys and gals, so far that you'll end up missing God by a country mile. This thing doesn't have a thing to do with what you want. It's got everything to do with the will of God. Everything to do with the will of the Father through the Son. You and I, as I've often told you, are like puppets on a string. We're like pawns on a board. He moves us here to move us there to get us here. And folks, I'm going to tell you something through the eons of generations. 
We ain't as important as we get to thinking that we are in this thing. Huh? You know, the thing that always brought me back to reality, it was uh, every once in a while I would think about the fact that the Lord did use a jack and a rooster, didn't he? Huh? And he could use them again if he has to. He's not going to have to. He's got us. Somebody say amen. amen. Hebrews 4, 1 and 2. Hebrews 4, 1 and 2. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Now notice he says, let us fear. Let us fear a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. You better fear, you better fear, you better fear. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. You have to understand that the word is spirit and life. You have to understand that. You have to understand that God can and does do anything that needs to be done or he wants to do. That's the reason when the scripture said, if thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And you and I think we're great believers until we have to believe. Then it's oh me, oh my, all right? Been there and done that one too. Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 6. Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 6. I'm telling you, God's got a way. God's after you. God's got your number. Somebody ought to be, ought to be saying, oh boy, instead of oh me, right? Let's do it. Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 6. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do that ye may live and multiply and go and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. Now we have done this, you know, the purpose of temptation. This probably would be a good CD to connect and just to tape to the back of that series, all right? But to humble you, to prove you, Prove thee, I'm sorry, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or no. And you know, when I taught that, uh, I told you then, that's the purpose of all this. The whole thing with God tempting us is to find out the end result. How are you going to handle it? Oh, me or oh, my. Or praise be to God. Because he's not going to put on me any more than I can handle. He's going to give me a way thereby to escape. So bring it on. Very few people have that attitude. Because after all, when that hurts, it's ouch, ouch. Ooh, that hurts. Oh, oh ooh. I think I'm going to lose the car. I think I'm going to lose the house. I think I'm going to... What? That's not what God said. God said that nothing that you'll ever be tempted with or in that's going to overtake you. He's already given you a way to escape and that way will come. In his time! Oh, that hurts. What do you suppose his time and our time is never the same time? Because we wouldn't learn anything, would we? We wouldn't learn anything. Well, now I'm going to tell you something, prophet. I've been going through this for 10 years. You may go through another 10 years. Well, if you'd pray and fast, and maybe I am praying and fasting towards some of the things for some of you people, and I am. But the fact of the matter is, that prayer and fasting isn't going to cause it to happen. It's going to keep it free so it can happen. Somebody needs to write that down. Okay? Well, I don't know. You know we've been going through this thing five years. Like I said, you may go through another five. Until God knows that your hearts are right. The reason, hey, Shakia Mahate. The reason some of you can't have finances is because you can't handle finances. You hear me? 
You can't handle them. You out here, you blow the money here, you blow the money there, you'll do this, you do that. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. God will never bless your finances until you get your noggins and your heart straightened up with your finances. There's about 15, eight, uh, uh, 22 people in this room that need to hear that right there tonight. Take that and it'll come, become life to you. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where was I at? Okay. Third verse. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna. Boy, to be humble is one thing, and then to cause you to be hungry is a whole different thing, isn't it? Which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live but bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Yeshua himself repeated that when he was being tempted, didn't he? The fact of it is, though, he suffered thee to hunger. Maybe you've been hungry. Maybe you've opened up the shelf and said, whoa, we don't have enough here to feed the children. As you've heard me prophesy, America is going to go hungry one of these days. There will be starvation in this great land. There'll be children dying from starvation in this land and people. Did it have to be that way for this nation? No, it didn't have to be. But this nation tempted the Lord God, and now judgment has come upon her. Judgment of which nobody is going to turn back. I, you know, back in the uh, late 70s and early 80s, I used to get all these, all, well, every once in a while, I'd get my life threatened over some of the things I prophesied. People say, well, our group is intercessor, group number, whatever that was, from wherever that is. And we've prayed, and God's going to hold back the judgment. That makes you a false prophet. Well, I got news for you. They prayed, all right. But with what you're seeing right now that's going on, folks, I'm going to tell you something. This whole thing that has, is being, uh, if you will, uh, put together by the left wing that's going on in, these, in, in some of our uh, nation's biggest uh, uh, cities right now is the beginning of what's going to bring a civil war to this country, something I prophesied back in the 80s. Now, it, it might bring its head up. Its head may go down for 10 years and then come back up. But this thing is set to, to become riotous. This thing is set to start shooting each other. This thing that the unions are now into these protesting things. People are being paid money, and there's men's names that are being named that's uh, multi, multi millionaires that's supplying these people with money. The socialists are trying to put down capitalism once and for all in this nation. You mark this prophet's words. This isn't a good time. It's just one of many reasons why. I must take you out of here. I've got to take you and yours out of here because this nation is going to burn. It is going to burn. And yet at the same time, how could that be? I agree with you. How could that be? Well, the only way it can be is because we defile the living God. We had it all. We had every bit of it. And then some of these knuckleheads, I love that word too, in Washington, D.C., started stealing money from us. Hmm? Started playing all these little games in the back room, sneaking these things into bills to pass money down to their friends and buddies so they get a kickback. Now we find out that our, our Social Security's all but gone in this nation. I wonder who's going to go to jail for fraud for that. Does anybody want to volunteer anybody? Well, let me tell you, probably nobody. But let me tell you about this prophet. They all need to be hung. They stole from the working class of this nation that made this nation what it is. They stole our money. And they got a better plan? No, they don't have a better plan. Like I think I told you the other night, I'm praying that there's a Republican will come into office to give us more time. I need more time because some of you knuckleheads are just a little bit more stubborn than others. Say, I love you, Brother Deckard. I love you, Brother Deckard. 
Thank you. I knew you did. Let's go on. Now, the fourth verse. Thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. You need to underline that. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. As a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord God chasteneth thee. If you're going through financial problems, okay, if you're going through marital problems, okay, if you're going through family problems or any other problems, did you ever stop to think that you're being chastened? Well, no, it's their fault. Oh, really? Think about it. God will use any means at any time at any place to do his will. Okay? And if in fact, and, we, and you've been taught this by this prophet, the powers of darkness only come at you where you're the weakest. Okay? If you've had trouble with health, that's where he's going to come at you. That's the reason you just got to, you've got to absolutely um, bombard, bombard the kingdom of heaven and on this earth with God's word about health. You ought, to have, you ought to have things big as all these up here with, with those little sticky notes on them about health. Same thing about finances. Because I'm here to tell you the Lord God will deliver you. He will deliver you. He will deliver you. But not until his time. Not until you have come to a place where he knows that he's assured. Should I say Worth delivering? No, where you can be delivered. God wants to use you. You people, as I think I said last night, you have no idea to what extent he wants to use you. Some of you are murmuring about the way you're being uh, used now, and that's going to have to stop. Okay? God's going to use some of you in, in ways that, like I said, you never dreamed of. But again, it's going to be in God's time, it's going to be when you and this prophet are fully on the same page and you paid enough price that God can you. See, the key is to understand where you're at tonight, God cannot use you next year at this time where you're at tonight. In order for God to use you next year at this time, you're going to have to come forward. Now, because of this and the laziness thereof, we don't do that part very well, do we? No, we don't. But God is going to bring you forth <laughs> without even telling you about it, if you're not careful, okay? Uh, God had not abandoned them, okay, uh, in all of what the, they, they went through in the wilderness. It was a purpose to develop their lives, that was what it was all about, was to develop their lives. You mean we're walking around this same rock we saw last year at this time? Don't look to me like we're developing much, God. Oh, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. God was leading them into his perfect will and plan for their life. See, that's what this is all about. His perfect will and plan for your life. What is that perfect will and plan for your life? Some of you don't even have any idea that he's got one. Well, I got Jesus and I speak in other tongues. Woo! It's all over now. Yeah, it's all over now. It's all over, all right. There were times, there was times in my early walk with the Lord, I'm going to tell you what, I didn't think he was within 10,000 miles of me, and I could have cared less, all right, to know what the, you know, what the real will of God was for my life. I was struggling, and when you're struggling, help! God, I'm still down here. And then if you're listening real close from in here, you'll say, I know it. Huh? You ever heard that happen? I'm not the only one to ever go through this stuff. Amen. So what do you mean you said, I, I know it? He said, because I said, I'll never leave you for, or nor forsake you. He said, I'm in you. Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember. I thought maybe he was getting deaf. You know, you could get older. <laughs> Repent for that, too, Okay. <laughs> 
God loves us. Failure can and does come in many forms according to you. See, I love it. Now listen, it is custom formed for each of us. So that way, not all of it, it likens maybe one thing to somebody else's, but it's always different. Like you were created individually different from one to the other. And that's what all this thing is. And yet the same thing, the blessings come when we realize that the time of failure was not wasted. I can remember thinking, whoo, man, I'm glad that thing quite finally quit ended. Did I see myself moving forward with God? No. I just saw myself coming out of the agony that I was going through at that point in time. Now what's up, God? Had no idea that it was attached to it. Let me say this. God allows us to fail to bring us forth, to bring us on. It is absolutely of the utmost importance that you fail because through your failures, you'll know who you are and you will see the strength that you have. You're looking at a failure in front of you tonight. Whether you know it or not, I'm looking at failure sitting out here before me tonight. But it's important. It's important that we fail. Because God can take, God can take from the failure and he can build anything he wants to build. Because why? When you're failing, you're more pliable than you are when you've got everything going your way. Yeah, God can get your attention a whole lot better than when things are just going Jim Dandy. Yeah, mm hmm Been there too. Huh? I used to say, God, how come I'm the only one going through all these things? Well, I don't know anybody in the church I was going to who was going, going through all this. Man, I, I don't understand. Now, the more the failures, you're going to like this part. Don't forget to write it down. The more the failures that you have in your life, probably the stronger the ministry is going to be in your life. Okay? Now that ought to just cause an outbreak of Holy Ghost dancing up and down the aisles. <laughs> yeah, after I get through what I'm going through, prophet. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you something, God is molding us. You know the problem with us? We get to be about, it used to be 15, it's probably 12 now. Get to look in the mirror and we're smarter than mom and dad. Hmm? Yeah. Well, oh, I'm smarter than old dad and mom. <laughs> yeah. And we get to believing that we've arrived. I, you know, I've said, I've said things to churches through the years that, uh, you know, if they, they could have stoned me and got away with it, they'd have done it. There was people in that one church I was in that was 50, 60, and 70 years old. There was nothing but bottle-sucking babies. And thought they were all growing up. Why? Well, why, brother, why, brother Deckard, we run the aisles in our Pentecostal church. We dance, we dance, and we fall. But as the Lord God puts it on us. Uh huh. I think you've heard the story about how I cured a whole congregation of passing out in the spirit stuff, right? Sound like pumpkins hitting that concrete floor, their heads. Next night, there wasn't nobody falling down. Wonder why. <laughs> well, if it was God, it'll, you know, it will laid them down on the floor. Folks, we didn't have it all figured out. And, and, and we didn't have it all figured out. And I, I'm going to tell you something. When the Lord God said that he would send Elijah in the last day, and, and, and this Elijah was going to come and do what? Restore all things. Do you realize all I'm doing is restoring to you what the church lost? That's all I'm doing. And those of you that have been around a long time with me now, you know that all I do is preach and teach the word. It's all it is. And you look at it and go, wow, I didn't know that was there. Of course you didn't know that was there. Okay, that's, that's the reason God sent me, so I, I could just restore what it is that, that he lost. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. When we get this thing restored, devil better look out. Hmm? 
You people be looking, you be looking for a good spiritual fight. Hmm? We'll probably have hotlines for people to call you that's having problems just so you can, yeah, I'll be able, you ever see that movie, The Ghostbusters? We'll get you a car with lights and everything. Huh? You go flying on them driveways, throw on the brake and bail out and go in there and start casting demons out of them. I'm going to tell you something. If you don't think the devil, if you don't think the devil doesn't know to stay away from me, he knows. He doesn't like it when I get in, when I get in a fight with, uh, in behalf of somebody else through intercession. He don't like that. Why? I don't lose. I don't lose, folks, and there's a big difference. I don't go into that thing hoping, well, I hope this works out. No, no, no. I go in to kick his lower end posterior from here to next Sunday. And I do it every time. And he knows that. So, uh, you know, once you get to a certain depth in this thing, uh, uh, Satan and his cohorts are going to sidestep you. They're going to do everything they can do to stay out of it. Why? Because they know that you can control him. Most of the church has not the foggiest idea. I was in a Pentecostal church one time. They decided they were going to have a deliverance. And before they could have it, they got all the, the women and the children on the other side of the petition, like the petition back in the back there. And I'm standing there going, dear God in heaven, what are we doing? Well, we're about to cast a demon, and we don't want the women and children here because, you know, they, they, that, that, those demons go out and jump on them. Well, girls, that don't say a whole lot for your spirituality, for sure, okay? <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, we're talking about supernatural. There are no walls, concrete or otherwise, that's going to hold out a supernatural being. But that's just part of how stupid we got. Okay? That's not all of it. That's just part of it. Well, let's go on. Now, um, Deuteronomy, oh no, I don't want to do that. Skip that. Deuteronomy 8, 16. Remember, it's to do what? It's to humble you. Of a broken and a contrite spirit. And folks, let me tell you something. God can't use anything less than that. For those of you that really know me, you know that I am a broken man. I have no pride. You know why? Because all of the hell that I've been through over all these years. There's nothing to be prideful about. I've been spit at. I've had my shins kicked. I've been threatened uh, as to being shot. I've been shot at. People have been killed thinking that they were killing me. They burn a hotel thinking they were going to kill me, and they didn't. But let me tell you something. I'm a humble man because I know that my life is but... <laughs> That's it. That's it. I'm here for the season that God sent me here. I have a depth that's not being taught anywhere in this world, and I know that. If we made books out of everything we're doing, it's hard telling uh, how much uh, uh, cash we could put up for the people that are not going to be able to go to the island. I've been thinking about that. The, 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 this stuff isn't on the bookshelves. You can't find this on the bookshelves. Who knows what God will do? 816, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. So see, it's not for now. It's at the latter end. He's humbling you. He's bringing you to a place where Moses was said to have been the most meek man that ever walked the face of this earth. And I'm here to tell you, as studying Moses all these years, he better have been meek. Because if it had been Elijah, he'd have said, let fire come down and strike them all dead and we'll start over, Lord. Okay? No, he was the most meek man on the face. But you look at his life. Look what he had to go through. My Lord and my God, he, he killed, that, uh, killed that Egyptian that was killing one of the brothers, one of the Hebrews. He fled, uh, fled out into the wilderness and he was out there for 40 years. And bless God, then he, then he, then he had to come back and carry the burden in which God gave him to carry, and he didn't want to. Was, was Moses humble? Yeah. Did, hum, did he want to be a hero? There wasn't anything about him that wanted to be a hero. 
There's nothing about me that wants to be a hero. I don't see being a hero. You know, you've heard me say how many times. I have said from the con, uh, uh, well, not the very beginning, it didn't take many years, that what I have, it feels as I got cursed. I'm not like all the other preachers. I would rather fit in and be like the other preachers so that somebody every once in a while would like me. I'll never forget the first, one of the first times anybody ever prophesied over me. This brother went to bawling, squalling like you wouldn't believe. I thought, what's wrong with him? Finally, he straightened up and he said, let me tell you something, brother. He said, you're going to be hated. He said, you're not going to find any preacher that's ever going to take you in. And you know, all these years, there's not been one preacher that has befriended me. Not one. I've walked alone in this thing. He said, yet at the other side of this thing, he said, you will travel the world. You will see the dead be raised and all matter of miracles will flow out of the anointing that God's put into you. But he said, I've never seen anything like it. He said, it's almost, he said, it's almost like you're, now listen to this, you're almost out of time. God said, I will bring Elijah back, didn't he? I didn't even understand that I am a man out of time. That's what makes me who I am. Not by choice. If I had my choice, I'd be sitting out there and one of you would be up here. Okay? But that ain't the way God did it. <laughs> Fortunately or unfortunately for you. Okay. Now, this, the second time that I've read there that, that the Lord said humble. All right? Everything that God allows in our lives is what? Is for are good in the end, in the latter end, all right? You must remember our training has prepared us to enjoy and possess everything God has. Maybe that would help us we went along the way, okay? Uh, but you want to know something with God? He's got this thing all planned out. He knows exactly what he's going to have to do. i got to say this in a nice way. To make you come to the place that you will be able to provide back to him what he invested in you from the foundations of this world. Think on that tonight. That'll keep you up for a while, brothers and sisters, because that's exactly what this is. God has an investment in each one of us from the foundations of the world. He told Jeremiah, I knew thee, Jeremiah, before I placed thee a womb. But God knows See, I keep saying, the, the thing that the church never taught you is real simple. You came out from the supernatural world in angelic form. Now listen to me. When you give up the ghost and you die, you're going to return again from whence you have come. Now, how you've lived out on this earth is going to determine whether or not it's going to be in the kingdom of God or in the lake of fire which is unfortunate and a bit unfair as far as I'm concerned. I'll, I'll talk to the Lord about that uh, when I get there. How come you and I got sent down here to have to go through this when there's all the millions upon millions and millions and billions of angels? How did you get, how did you, how did you get chosen? How did I get chosen for this? Very interesting, isn't it? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Of course, there is no salvation plan for the angels. We know that. But God in his infinite wisdom knows exactly, all right, exactly what he's going to do. Now, what discouragement that we must uh, have been for the Lord when he heard Peter say to him, Lord, get behind me. The rest of those knuckleheads, love that word. They may forsake you, but Lord, I won't. He knew Peter was going to have to fail. Did Peter fail? Oh, yeah. Did they all fail? You better believe it. You want to talk about a bunch of failures? Have you ever, have you denied the resurrection of our Christ lately? No, they did. They believed not in the resurrection. You're talking about a bunch of knuckleheads. And yet they turned this world upside down. And like I've said for so, so long, six years, over six years, 
If God can take a bunch of knuckleheads like that and use them, He can use us. And He will. At least we believe in the resurrection, don't we? <laughs> yeah, we got one leg up on them. Not very far, though. Okay, now, proving you to know what is in your heart is what this is about. Proving simply means to see if it's genuine. To see if it's genuine. God knew Israel would fail. He did not need to test them to see that. He didn't need to do that. He knew that was going to happen to him. Israel needed to know about themselves. Now, God knew that there were, uh, you know, the Philistines were, and the Philistines were men of war. Israel, at that point, when they were in the wilderness, was not ready to fight for the land that the Lord God had given them, and God knew that. And, of course, you can remember when they went in to spy out their land and came back, Caleb and, and Joshua were the only two that said they could take the land. The other ten says, ah, oh, there's giants in the land. We can't do that. Here we go around the rock again, right? That whole generation besides jo uh, Joshua and Caleb had to die off. Here we go, man. Are they dead yet? Think about it. <laughs> Boy, what a merciful God. I'm telling you, it's a good thing I'm not God. <laughs> Woo! That's only one of many reasons why I couldn't be God. Amen? Well, it goes on to say that the Lord God, thanks for pretty spatial, though, because he, he, ha he has a plan. And, it, it, and I'm going to tell you something. We need to understand what we're about. We need to understand what God, why God uses this method of failure to bring us up. I'm going to tell you the humbling thing, I think is the most important thing. You want me to tell you something here that's a little secret? Anytime that I talk to somebody, they come up and talk to me, the Lord God lets me see your heart. I don't care who you are, when it happens, I, I, I see your heart. And if your heart is that of arrogancy, then you don't know anything about being humble. But if your heart is humble and you have been humbled somewhat or a whole lot or whatever, it shows up. And I know that there could be something there to work with. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. Just because you're saved, filled the Holy Ghost, and speak in other tongues doesn't mean you're humble. You need to write that down. That doesn't mean there's humility in your life. Humility brings a person to saying, I'm wrong. It'll bring you to that point. It'll bring you to that point where you'll say it and not even think about it. I'm wrong. But without it, you'll never say it. What's in your heart? What's in your heart? Well, I'm going to tell you something. God knows. Read Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 15. All right? Before you go to bed tonight. Now, turn with me to Philippians 1 through 6. I'm sorry, Philippians 1, 6. And it says here, being confident of this, everything that he, he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So did he begin a good work in you when you became saved? Absolutely. Now he says, he says, in you will perform it. He will perform it, folks. It's sort of like you signed up, isn't it? Now, the, 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 the thing it gets to be in what you signed up for. Let's go to Romans 8, 28, and we'll end with these scriptures. 8, 28 through 33. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. You are called according to his purpose. You can be assured of that in this day, in this hour, and in this room. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. So you see... It, it, folks, it isn't like you, you volunteered. See, we get to thinking, my, I, well, I volunteered. No, no, no. It, you, it was predestinated. 
It was predestinated that we're here this night. It was predestinated. You know where from? The foundations of the world. Now this will this will this will uh, make your toes uh, tingle. When you and I knew each other, communed with each other, and the church never bothered trying to tell you. You know why the church couldn't tell you that? They didn't know that. They didn't have the foggiest idea. Stop and think about it. It makes sense, though, doesn't it? You come from the spirit world. What do you come? What form do you come in? Because he said, I placed you in your mother's womb. Hmm. Kind of funny that somebody can't put one and one together, isn't it? You know why? Because they were blinded. God blinded them. They couldn't see it if they wanted to have seen it because it was going to take a last day prophet to bring it. To get people to understand, you don't have to be afraid of dying. I'm, I don't know what big amount and percentage of the church, 75, 80% of the church is afraid to die. Why would you be afraid to die if in fact, bless God, you have sold yourself out to him and received him? Hmm? You know why? Because it is a great mystery. But let me tell you something. God said in the last days, he would begin to reveal the mysteries. And this is one mystery. Uh, there's <clears throat> several others that I will reveal in time, maybe. God tells me to. Now, moreover whom he, oh, I'm sorry, 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Ah, praise God. That he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for all us all. Now shall he not, uh, now shall he not with him also freely give us, how many things? All things. Who shall lay anything to his charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. The ultimate desire of God's heart for each and every one of us is to make us like his holy son, Yeshua. That's his, that is his ultimate goal. And he's going to do, and he's going to accomplish that, brothers and sisters, one way or another. The old story of it is you can do it the easy way or you can do it the hard way. You can keep kicking against the pricks as the Bible talks about. Or you just give up and give in, like I keep saying. That's what you need to do. And if I were you, I would just pick the give up and give in part. It's going to be a lot easier on you and even a lot easier on this prophet. All right? I, I know that each of you here and understand and know that just because you volunteered to be part of Ephraim doesn't mean you're going to end up in Israel. That ultimate decision will lie with me and the ten. And, and I'm here to tell you, folks, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like pulling eye teeth before this thing's over if you don't give up and give in. Just get it over with. You know, we're trying to get the women to be women instead of the women being men. We're trying to get the men to be men first, to take the authority and the control over their families. But sometimes that doesn't seem to be the case. We're trying to get the, 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 the men to have control of their children. And still their children just doing whatever they please to do. Well, let's don't get into that. That's another sermon. I'll save that one. Maybe I'll give him part of that. Stand up. We're going we're to pray. <clears throat>